to Griffin Update Sports, a student-produced show all about Missouri Western Athletics. We've got it all every week. Highlights, games, players, fans, and every sport all year long. Welcome to Griffin Update Sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. And I'm Jake Michael. It's basketball season, which is why we thought our attire and our location would be appropriate. It's basketball season, but he's not ready because he didn't quite make that shot, but I'm liking these colors. Today, we're gonna talk to men's and women's basketball about their upcoming season. We have an in-depth interview with a coach and a look at soccer's weekend. We'll also have our fan trivia and our usual round table. This week, we're talking about the start of NBA. It's the best time of year. But before we talk about NBA, let's hear from our women's basketball team about their upcoming season. Reporter Tanner Cobb has the lowdown. Missouri Western's women's basketball team was looking to bounce back after an injury-stricken season. They finished with a 13-18 record, but were still able to be the first 12 seed ever in the MIAA tournament to win a game. Now that they have a healthy team and some new players coming in, they are looking to have a good season. Uh, although it was a tough year, we took, took all the positive out of it we could. We think that'll help carry over this year into a better season. Uh, last year was definitely tough. Um, obviously, we had a lot of stuff going on, but you know that was a point in time for us to get closer with each other and um, become one. And I feel like it helped us grow, and it's transferred over to this year. Our chemistry is great. Uh, you know, obviously, it's one of the things that our returners are responsible for every year. Is, you know, help the new kids get incorporated and, and helping them just understand what we do here and what our culture is here. We have a lot of seniors, so we've been trying to set the bar high and lead and help the newcomers and absorb everything that we've been trying to accomplish. I feel like we're a whole different team, to be honest. Um, like our offenses and different types of players we have this year. Um, it's just competitive every day and just are gradually increasing and getting better and challenging each other. Well, just like all of our expectations are now where, where our program is, we expect to finish in the top part of the conference and, and hope to make a run in the NCAA tournament. This is Tanner Kyle reporting for Griffin Media. The team had to overcome a lot last year, and I have a good feeling about them, and also men's basketball. Oh yes, I'm definitely excited to see what the men do under Coach Wicks. I got a chance to talk to them about how the team's looking this year. Check it out. You gotta be able to guard your yard and be a dude. And if you can guard the basketball season is starting up as the men's basketball team just had their first official practice at the beginning of this last week. To describe the settings as intense is an understatement for what the guys are gonna bring this season. Head coach Sundance Wicks is looking to turn this program around in his first year. The team was picked last in the conference, but that doesn't stop them from working day in and day out to accomplish their goals. Juniors Jonathan Mesmack and Tyus Milholland talk about the team's motivation. It honestly motivates us a lot. Like, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of bad to say that, but we kind of like it because nobody expects us, and like we work so hard that we know we're going to be way more successful than 14. But we just let people talk and keep working hard. Really, ranking. I don't know who, who, who's ranking us, the coaches. Like, I, I don't even know what the ranking system is. I don't, I don't really care. We rank ourselves every day in practice. If, if we were good enough to beat the, the, D2, the national D2 champions last year, if we didn't practice like that, then, then that wasn't a good practice. We, we want our best every single practice. The players touch on their team chemistry this year and why it's at such a high level. Usually it takes a couple te like a couple months for teams to get like used to each other, you know, and like we click first weekend, we're all hanging out, having fun, like on the court and off the court. We can get on we can get on the court, talk our talk our smack and get all in each other's face, right? When we're off the court, we're, we're buddy buddy. Yeah, man. we do everything it's together. We do everything together too. We have a big team with 17 guys, but we all together all the time. The intensity Coach Wicks brings is another reason why the players are working so hard. He's an intense guy, you know. Uh, you, he walks in the gym and everyone's like, you know, who's that guy with those Sperry's on, the short shorts? He just gets after it. He, it's like, if you're, if you're not on his level, if you're not bringing it on his level, then he's going to let you know and let everybody else know that you're not bringing it to the level that you want. Always, he always tells us either you can bring your own energy or we're going to take it out of you. And yeah. like, he doesn't bother him to take it out of you. And if he does, you're going to feel it. <laughs> I expect great things to come from the men this year under Coach Wicks. Their first game is November 3rd at the St. Joseph Civic Arena. This is Bailey Ketchum for Griffin Update Sports. Looks like Coach Wicks doesn't mess around. 
You're right, he doesn't. He's a very intense guy. I sat down with him to get to know his style and what he's got going this season with his new team. Today, I'm here with the head coach of men's basketball, Sundance Wicks. It's your first season here with the Griffs, and it's your first season as a head coach. Can you just talk about what it's like to be a head coach for the first time? Bailey, first of all, thanks for letting me come on Griffin uh, Update Sports, yep. right? The Gus. Yeah, we're on the Gus Bees. I, it was a great thing we talked about before we came on cameras, the Gus Bees. We're going to have the Griffin Update Sports Awards of the year. I think you should do that. But when it comes to uh, being a coach for the first time, uh, I, I liken it to, I'm a big movie guy. So I liken it to Groundhog's Day. If you've ever seen Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray. Yep. He wakes up every day and he's repeating the same day over and over again, except each day he learns a new life hack. Like he learns to help the guy from stopping to step in the wet pothole. You know, he tries to find the girl of his dreams. Every day uh, I've been on a job, it's been 201 days now since I got the job. Who's counting, right? Fairly <laughs> you. 201 days since we got the job. It's our 54th day as a team together and it was our fourth practice or our fifth practice today as a team together. So it's a... Uh, it's been a learning experience, to say the least. Uh, I tell people, like, I'm writing down stuff every single day, so I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting more than I'm remembering right now, but I'm gonna look back a year from now and find out which things that, in our program that we wanna put Miracle Grow on and continue to do and the things that we wanna poison and get rid of. Uh, so as much as the guys are learning about me and how we're doing things, I'm learning so much about all of our 17 players we have on our roster, uh, the community of St. Joseph, and then really, you know, how we want to continue to do things going forward every single day. Okay, can you talk about your coaching style a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I'm a very energetic guy. It's not, it's not hard to know, right? Uh, they call me the juice man for a reason. I bring the energy every single day, and uh, I just believe that your entry fee to the day is energy, effort, and enthusiasm. You got to bring those three things. If you want to, if you want to have a fulfilled life, you know, have great energy bring the proper effort every single day, like Deadpool, maximum effort, right? Maximum effort, some minimum requirement. And then uh, great enthusiasm, do everything with great enthusiasm. That doesn't mean that when I coach, it's just all sunshine and gumballs. You know, we like to talk, this is a rainbow land. We got things we got to get done, right? So I coach the guys hard. And I think a lot of that is come from, they, they respect the fact that hard work is what, what makes great teams. And great players want to be coached hard. I've never met a great player that said, coach, take it easy on me. I've only met great players that always said, coach, we want more. We want more. And that's the kind of culture we're developing. So my coaching style is very aggressive, very energetic. We're up at it, man. We're going at it. But I'm also going to let them know when they're doing things right. I'm going to get excited when they do things the right way. And then we're going to correct them and we're going to teach them when we want it done a different way. Uh, it's, it's all about learned habits. And everybody talks about culture. You know, what's culture? What's culture? Uh, we just say it's habit formation. We're trying to form the right habits on a daily basis. That sounds like a nice culture. <laughs> <laughs> so you just finished preseason. What was preseason like? What were some things that you guys were doing to get ready? Well, there's four pillars to team building that we believe in. Um, one of the first pillars of team building, I think the most important pillar of team building is shared suffering. <laughs> I, I say that, you know, we, we talk about suffering a lot in our program, but we want to share it with each other. Uh, we got up every morning uh, about 4.45, 5 a.m. And every Tuesday we have what's called a Griff Gauntlet in our preseason. We don't condition on the court. We do a lot of stuff outside. We do, we do different things where we're working together as a team to build camaraderie and chemistry, but also toughness. And so when, when, we, when we do our gauntlets, they're a challenge of your physical, your mental, and your spiritual. We want to, we want to train the complete player, but we also want to train the complete person as well, which is you have three parts of your body, your physical body, right? We know that your mind can tell your body what to do, so there's the mental part, and then your spiritual. When, when everything seems to go, be going haywire in life and it's not going right, you gotta rely on your spirituality and your faith. And so a lot of our physical conditioning tests are, are those three-pronged tests. And so we've done, we've done conditioning for outside. We pushed sleds, we pulled prowlers, we've uh, carried, carried battle ropes across campus to the, to the clock tower. We, we've done it all. Uh, we've suffered together and that's a part of it. When guys get through things that are hard, uh, we like to say those who work the hardest are the last to surrender. And when they get through tough things, uh, they feel that much more connected with one another. And that's just stage one. The other stages are individual responsibility. Each guy has to man their own ship and, and be up in the mornings and be ready to go. Uh, and then it's shared ownership. We're all owning this team and this program, right? We all have ownership in it. Uh, and the more you invest in it, the more you own. That's just how it works in life. And the last part of this, when it's all said and done, is we should look back on have a collective pride about what we did, how we do things, uh, what we've done in the community. Uh, that preseason is, there should be a collective pride right now from our guys of what we accomplished in the preseason. It's only six weeks, but you should be proud of it.
Yeah. So you guys were picked last in the conference, and this is a team that doesn't deserve to be picked last in the conference. Completely different. I like your approach, Bailey. I, I like your approach to this, Bailey. We should put you on the media polls. So, what kind of motivation does that give you and this team? Well, I think the first and most important thing is reality, right? Uh, reality and perception, two different things. You know, someone else's perception of our reality, right? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But what we do is tell guys is this is where they think we're at. That's fine, that's everybody else's opinion. We don't try to worry about the opinion of critics. We know what we're doing here and we know how we're getting ready. And so we give them that locker room fodder and say you were picked 14th or 12th or whatever. Look, I'm a first year head coach. I get it. If, I, if there's other coaches that have been coaching games a lot longer than I have, have been doing a lot longer than I have, they're going to look at the new guy in town and they're going to say, let's see if this guy can coach. You know, here's 14th. You know, that, that stuff doesn't matter. Uh, we tell our guys, you know, trust your work. You got to trust your work. Uh, and if they are, if they're really buying into what we're doing, then they are, they know that we're working hard. Um, but we tell them we're not the only team that works hard. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of teams in the country that work hard. And so we have to accelerate our learning curve by doing more being more, uh, stay, staying, staying late, coming in early, getting extra work in. Uh, you can't speed up learning, but you can study harder, yeah. right? So you, you just can't, you can, you can take in some, some knowledge, but you can't speed the process up, but you can go study harder. You can stay early, you, can, you stand, can't stay late, can't come in early, right? That's what we want our guys to do, is to study harder. And I definitely have been noticing that in the guys. I mean, I was here out at your first practice at the beginning of the week, and you guys had over two hour practice and you guys had guys that were staying after still. It's like, that's dedication and that's awesome to see in this program. I, you know, it's funny because I, I try to tell our guys though, like that's just the minimum requirements, maximum effort. That's just the bare minimum. Is there's, every, there's a lot of kids that are staying late. I mean, in great programs, if we want to be a great program, we got to play against the invisible opponent, the people that we can't see that we're expecting their best all the time. Okay, so one final thing, you call yourself the juice man. What is, what is the juice? Well, you got juice too, Bailey. I do. All right, everybody's got juice, right? Okay. And so w w the, the, the true essence of juice is your spirit, and, you know, who you are, your soulful being, right? We're all soulful beings. And the true essence of your juice, because I always say bring your own juice. You can't bring my juice, right? I got mine, you got yours. But when you bring your own juice, uh, it means that you're accepting who you are as an individual. We're accepting everybody's differences. Uh, the highest form of love is agape. It means unconditional love, right? We don't care who you are, where you're from, what you look like, how small or tall you are, you know, what you're high. It doesn't matter. What we do is we love you unconditionally. So your juice is your spirit. And when you really fully accept that and you bring that out every single day, it's a beautiful thing. You start seeing people being comfortable in their own skin and, and, and transforming lives because our, we have four rules to bring in the juice, four rules to bring in your unique spirit. The first rule is you got to wake up and pay the fee. And we're the young, the young kids, they say, stay woke, right? <laughs> stay yoke, or stay, stay woke. You know, you stay yoke, that's like an egg pun right there. <laughs> so you got you to wake up and pay the fee, and that's energy, effort, and enthusiasm. All right, so you take those three things like we talked about, those are the entry fee to today. The second thing is you got to say yes to opportunity. There's too many times people say no to stuff. I mean, this is an opportunity for me to get in front of you and, 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 and Griffin Update Sports and talk about our program. That's important to me. And so you say yes to more opportunities and more things happen in life for you. Uh, the third rule is you got to go to war with yourself because you're going to have bad days. We're human beings. We're allowed to have bad days, but we can't have down days. You're not allowed to show a defeated face to someone in here because I just think we're supposed to uplift people. We're supposed to pick people up when we see them, high five them, no flybys, right? So you can have bad days, just don't have down days. Hashtag NDD, no down days. <laughs> Uh, and the last rule of the juice, the last and final rule of the juice is you can't take any credit. Because uh, once you start transforming and you see good things happen, you're going to want to pump your chest and say, I got the juice, baby. You're going to want to say that. But what we really want to do is we want to give that to others. We want others to, be, to bring their own juice. And uh, to me, I give all, all, all glory to God. So to God be the glory is, is the way I like to put it out there. And so I know he's given me a gift of energy. And if I don't use it, I believe he's going to take it away someday. So I got to bring it every single day. And I just hope our players do that. And when our players start bringing it and they have, they start bringing it, they start giving it away. And then more people start to bring the juice. And now we call it the army of energy givers. They've surrounded us, Bailey. Well, that's awesome. I definitely feel like I have the juice now. <laughs> You've always had the juice. <laughs> yeah, but I, did, I didn't know for sure. But Well, now you know how to summon the juice, right? Now you know how to summon the juice. I got it. <laughs> well, I'm super excited to see what you guys do this season. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Bailey, you're awesome. Thank you.
Griffob. I could listen to him talk for days. He's a very interesting guy. I agree. Were you able to make it out to any of the soccer games this weekend? Unfortunately not, but thankfully reporter Morgan Doyle was there to catch the action. On Sunday here at Sprout Stadium, the Missouri Western Griffins hosted the number one in the MIAA and nationally ranked University of Central Oklahoma Broncos. The Griffins started out solid, holding the number 10 team in the country to only one goal in the first half. But the Broncos came out strong in the second, scoring two more right away and eventually a third, making the score four to zero. Um, went in a half time with, you know, the thought that we could get the game level and then, you know, we just, that first 10, 15 minutes, second half, we just couldn't get out of our own end. We couldn't win a 50-50 and just didn't have the presence. And they took advantage of it and scored a couple quick goals. And at that point, you know, it's tough to come back. The Griffins were able to take 11 shots on the Broncos, who have recently been holding their opponents to an average of just four and a half shots a game. And along with holding them scoreless throughout the first 30 minutes, the Griffins are hopeful. The top team in our league, so we can see that we played with them for 45 minutes, right? And we can play with the best teams in the country. They're undefeated, top 10 team in the country. But right there, we just got to understand the importance of executing for 90 minutes. I like the resolve of our team once we got down, too, for us just to continue to battle and stay in it. I was proud to see that from the players. On the other end of the field, the Broncos took 25 shots on freshman goalie Anna Mayer, a season high for her, and she finished the game with a total of seven saves for the Griffins. I think after coming off a big save, you know, the momentum goes up a bit, and you can carry that energy from the back line to, like, throughout the field. So I think it's important, you know, when those big saves happen to just bring the energy up. But we didn't stop playing no matter what the score was, which I'm proud of. You know, it's obviously you don't want to lose 4-0 to zero on your home field, but we didn't give up, and that's important takeaway. You know, take away everything you can from the loss and bring it into the next upcoming games. And I thought we were playing pretty good soccer. We had a couple good chances. They had a couple good chances, and good teams take advantage of open players in the box. You know, they, they played a ball in, and we didn't care. You know, we didn't cover the runner, and they took advantage of it. And that's what good teams do. But you know, I thought overall we played some pretty good soccer there for 45 minutes. The Griffins also played on Friday, getting a two to zero win over Northeastern State with goals from senior Cassidy Minky and sophomore Taylor Schwartzkopf. The loss to UCO allowed the Griffins to go one and one on the weekend. After a four to zero loss. The Griffins moved to 11-5 on their season and remain third in the MIAA, while Central Oklahoma was able to maintain their undefeated season. For Griffin Media, I'm Morgan Doyle. It sounds like another intense weekend. Most definitely. Ready for some sports trivia? Duh. Per usual, we like to get out on campus to get Missouri Western students involved in talking sports. Here's our segment, Do You Know Your Sports? with Bailey Ketchum. <laughs> Okay, today we are doing trivia on Can You Guess That Coach? Lily, who is this coach? That would be Coach Carbon from the volleyball team. You're right. Can you guess this coach? Uh, that's, that's Sundance, the Griff Up guy, right? You're right. Yeah. Can you tell me who this is? Uh, coach Williamson. You're right. Can you guess this coach? Uh, that's, that's a Neil Patrick Harris a little further down the road. I mean, I, I can see it, but <laughs> no. Can you tell me who this coach is? Uh, yeah, that's Coach Ellis. Coach Ellis. I, no. Baseball. Coach Buzz. <laughs> can you guess this coach? Bad. Coach Yuri. Can you guess this coach? It looks like Coach Bagley. Can you tell me... What coach this is? It's head women's basketball coach, Rob Admission. You're right. Can you tell me who this is? Oh, that's that's Chad. Chad, what team does he coach? Soccer. You're right. I don't even think I could have got all those coaches either. Then you need to get out to more sporting events. We'll have more sports talk in our roundtable after this break. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds.
Welcome back. Jake and I are here along with reporter and basketball player Bo Baker to talk about the start of NBA. Okay, we're wearing Lakers jerseys. You're wearing a Houston jersey. Let's start out with talking about this fight. Well, I, first of all, I want to establish we won that fight. Um, I, everyone got pulled away from the <laughs> Lakers, but you know, I guess they care about their teammates more than we do. But we, we throw punches on our side. But uh, no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't the ugliest fight I've ever seen. It's not like the malice of the palace, but it was, it was pretty ugly. It, honestly, it wasn't that bad, in my opinion. But the biggest thing that came out of it is the suspensions. Brandon Ingram's out for four games. Rondo's out for three, and Chris Paul's out for two. And Chris Paul's actually losing almost $500,000 just out of a two-game suspension. So that's my biggest concern with it. I'm not worried about the other stuff. Yeah, it was, I mean, there was a lot going on. It was, it, it was kind of interesting to watch. But I think it was just kind of childish of them to do that. Like, Brandon Ingram, like, really coming over from the other side of the court to throw a punch at. He didn't even know who he was throwing a punch at. That was just, I was like, really, you're going to do that? And then being on LeBron's side, I would be very frustrated if I was him. I mean, starting out 0-3, like, that's not something that he wanted to do. But obviously, he knows that their team has a lot of work they need to do to get to that high caliber like the Warriors. But, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Yeah, it was. But Le LeBron pulled away Chris Paul because, you know, they're all buddy-buddy and everything. Mm -hmm. Which, that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. When you're on the court and you're on different teams, you are enemies. Like, I wouldn't be pulling away him. I'd be pulling away one of my teammates. That's just me, though. Yeah, he definitely should have pulled away Brandon Ingram. If anybody yeah. Ever tried to stop <laughs> yeah him right. I think Lane Stevenson had him, but I'd have been on, you know, their side, not Houston's side. Oh, for sure. He was playing peacemaker, though. I mean, it's just like he just came in, kind of gave him a bear hug. I thought it was kind of cute, honestly. Yeah. It, was, it was cool to see. Um, I want to start out with talking about the Raptors. They're obviously a really hot team right now. Kawhi and Kyle Lowry, like, they're just, they're hot. And like we were talking about before, if the season ended right now, four games in, they would be at the very top. Yeah, I think uh, Kawhi has that, that new dimension, you know, playing defense on, on, uh, on one end and, you know, being an elite scorer on the other end. And I think that, you know, when you're setting that example for the rest of your teammates, it really starts to, you know, uh, you know, you know, come off of them. And then everybody's going to start playing with that kind of intensity. Um, you know, and, and maybe that's the new philosophy of their new coach. Um, you know, they got rid of Dwayne Casey last year, and they won Coach of the Year. That was very, very head scratching. But um, you know, they're doing something different over there. I think um, having another big time star like him, he's a, he's a better player than Demar Derozan. I think we can all agree on that. I think he's um, he's more versatile, um, but he d really does add that new dimension. Yeah, we're definitely seeing that um, that NBA fin that Finals MVP in Kawhi <laughs> this year, uh, and I think he's going to carry that over for the rest of the season because he's got some stuff to prove. Sitting out almost the entire year last year, people calling him soft for the injury and stuff like that. So we're going to see a di a different Kawhi, probably even better Kawhi than we have in years past. So I'm excited to see. Yeah, speaking of a team that needs to show up, Thunder. Obviously, it seems to me that they can't really do much without Westbrook. I mean, he hasn't played a whole lot yet this season. He because of his injury and they obviously haven't been doing much I really want to see more out of them because I've enjoyed watching Thunder in the past but without their MVP I kind of think that they're just going to stay low under the radar yeah I'm glad I'm not on the show and you know under contract or something to back up <laughs> Russell Westbrook because that's the last thing I will do I thought they moved the ball better against Golden State in game one uh, I really thought they did and it, that's just the way it is when you don't have Westbrook on the floor and Westbrook's a great distributor he's a great player I don't take anything away from him but you know Pass some shots up and realize, have enough self-realization that you're not as elite of a scorer as you are, at least from the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he's definitely not that good of a shooter as he thinks he is. He's right. not a Clay, yeah, he's no. not a Steph, he's not a Kevin Durant, his former teammate or anything like that. But, of course, Russell Westbrook, he impacts the game on so many other levels defensive-wise. Um, being able to attack the rim, draw two, give it to Steven Adams or kick it out to a shooter. And I was actually surprised with the Thunder's performance against the Warriors because I thought the Warriors were going to easily blow them out by 20 without mm -hmm. uh, having Russell Westbrook in the lineup. So I was happy to see them do pretty well without their, their MVP. But I don't think they're going to be that good of a team. They'll probably be the same type of team as they were last year. I'm still mad at Paul George for not going to the Lakers, by the way. <laughs> if Paul George ever sees this, I just know I'm very mad about that. He would have made the season so much more interesting if he went to the Lakers. You're probably right about that. And yeah, Warriors, they started out with two tough games. I wasn't expecting that out of them. They're a team that, you know, usually when you watch a team at the beginning of the season and they're kind of starting out slow, it's like, oh gosh, like they're going to have a rough season. Obviously, you never think that when you watch the Warriors because it doesn't really matter how they start, how they're doing in the middle. They'll always end on top as they have in the past. But Warriors, I think their defense has kind of like, they're letting out a lot, letting up a lot of points. Obviously, 
everywhere in the NBA is letting up a lot of points. Like Pelican, Pelicans averaging 140 points in their first two games. Like the defense right now, I feel like there's no defense in the NBA, honestly. Yeah, you have to pace yourself, you know, 82 games in a year. You really got to pace yourself. And plus, you know, the, the, a lot of guys are shooting threes now. I mean, and not just shooting threes. I mean, they are shooting them at a high percentage. Like that is almost a must if you're a player. Even, if, even big guys are shooting them. So, and then you got three elite shooters on that team that's, they're going to they're gonna jack them up because they know they can. And that's why they're scoring a lot. Yeah, but you got to think, defense in the NBA really is non-existent for most Agreed, yeah. agreed. So it's not college basketball where they're only playing 28, 30 games in a season. So defense matters. It doesn't matter as much, especially for a team like the Warriors. We all know they turn it up once it comes to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too concerned with their defense. Usually defense starts picking up after the All-Star break. So that's when I'll probably be watching a lot more games to see if people play defense. Yeah, without Iguodala, they, it really does fall off defensively. Yeah, yeah, true. He definitely brought a lot of strong defense in that. Um, but the Warriors, it really doesn't matter, I guess, how much points they give up because they're always putting up even more points than their opponents, obviously. But even though I'm wearing a, a Lakers jersey, Celtics are my team this year. I'm super excited that Hayward and uh, Kyrie are back. It's taking a little bit of adjustment period for them to get back in the role of things and obviously for the pa past starters to see them back in the lineup. But Jason Tatum, I think, is really building up into that star role, and he's been showing out these last couple games. Yeah, now he's got another year under his belt, and he looks, like, very, very solid. Yeah, and you're right, there is an adjustment period because you've got to figure out the roles of, of each guy. I think as Kyrie and, and Jason Tatum, they have to coexist on the floor as – you know, just kind of co like co-stars, but you know, prolific scores at the same time because they're both really good at it. I mean, Jason Tatum's way farther ahead than we ever thought he would be, and I think as long as they coexist that way and everybody else plays their role as a healthy team and just focuses, you know, strictly on defense because that's, I mean, you know, that's what uh, Brad Stevens, that's that's his focal point is, is defense. They'll, they'll be successful. Oh, definitely by far. I'm very excited to make sure this healthy team stays together. And I'm excited to see the Celtics, even though I am a Lakers fan. So, like, I can't, I'm not going to cheer for them like that. But Jason Tatum, loved watching him in college. He was, he's a fellow Missourian, so I knew about him in high school as well. And then Kyrie, of course, being the scorer that he is. I love watching him and Gordon Hayward. So I'm excited to see them and what they do this year. But it, it was time to tell how good this team really could be. Okay, Lakers fan. Who do you think would be a good person to tag on with LeBron? Honestly, we need a couple <laughs> as of what it seems yeah, right, right now. But the biggest thing I would say is if we could get somebody like Klay Thompson as a shooter, honestly, because LeBron loves shooters. He's able to drive and draw two, three defenders. If he could kick it open to somebody who knocks it down at a 45 to 46% clip from the three-point line, that's going to help the team out tremendously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Klay Thompson is probably the best option, especially in the upcoming season or, or our summer, I should say. Um, Jimmy Butler would be a good one, another guy who's just hard-nosed and he, he brings, you know, good intensity. He's actually a very underrated shooter, I think, anyway. But, you know, he's, he's very dynamic, whether it's from mid-range, three-point. Um, but, you know, he, he, brings, he brings some kind of toughness that you just don't get out of a lot of guys. And I think that's why he stayed in Minnesota, even after all the trade rumors and everything. He, he stayed in Minnesota because he feels that there is potential there and that he adds something to that team that they just wouldn't have without him. I agree with you guys. I agree. Clay. I think him and LeBron would mesh well together. They are both great guys, good shooters, just all around great players. Jimmy Butler, I think, I don't know, that's kind of a toss up just because I could see him and LeBron button heads, but he is also like, he's there to play. He loves the game a lot. He puts a lot of passion in how he plays, just like LeBron does. So I think it would be cool to see them play together as well. Most definitely. No, I, I think that, uh, I think, you know, the Lakers, I think their, their 0 3 start is very overstated because it takes a while to, you know, you know, to, to mesh and to gel together, but, you know, they'll, they'll get it right. They're going to be fine. I <laughs> promise you they're going to be fine. It just takes time, of course. It was like the Warriors. The Warriors weren't doing so great when Kevin Durant first came to the team. When LeBron went to Miami, they weren't doing so great to start, but they ended up having, like, the longest win streak in NBA history. So we'll just see what LeBron does. Yeah, time will tell. After this break, we'll take a look at more results from our teams and this week's upcoming sporting events.
Welcome back. Before we end the show, we want to give you more updates about what's going on with all Missouri Western sports. Football took down Emporia State this weekend, 42 to 28. Volleyball went 0 2 this weekend against UCM and Lindenwood and cross country competed in their last regular season competition at UCM with both teams finishing sixth. For the upcoming schedule, football is home against Pitt State on Saturday. Soccer is also home on Friday night against Northwest and away Sunday against UCM. And volleyball is home against Southwest Baptist Friday night and Missouri Southern Saturday night. That's all we have for you today. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out gogriffins.com. Also check out Bailey Sports Report on Griffin Update next week. We've got you covered every week. From all of us here at Griffin Update Sports, thank you for watching. Yeah.